Hello everyone, this is Pattu from Free FinCal and in this video let's talk about the Prak Parik long term equity fund. Uh, so I have received several requests for uh, reviewing this fund. I had already reviewed this fund in September 2016 so this is an update and uh, also uh, many people have been telling me that they prefer to watch the videos uh, rather than read my posts. I don't want uh, YouTube to be hijacking uh, Free, fin, uh, Free Fin Cal. So what I would like to do is uh, uh, show some uh, content in the videos and some content in the posts. And so you'll have to read uh, the post as well as watch the video to get the full review. So uh, more details and uh, a little more analysis is in the post. The post is linked just below. If you just scroll down, you will see the link. Uh, and so uh, in this video, like again, uh, I like to talk about how to uh, review the fund quickly using uh, the features at value research, but do not take everything that you see at value research uh, uh, seriously. Because if you look at the portfolio tab for this fund, it says equity is 71%. That's maybe if that's prob probably true. It says cash and cash equivalents 20.5%. 20, and this is debt about 7.8%. Now, cash and cash equivalents, this is completely wrong. Uh, it, it, it looks as if the fund is holding some cash, right? But if you look at the actual fact sheet, this is the October, uh, so let me just go here. So this is the fact sheet for October 2018. If you look at the portfolio, uh, it's got about, uh, this is like, uh, this is the equity. It's got about 46% of direct equity exposure, Indian equity exposure. It's got about 20% of arbitrage. So the total of, uh, direct equity and uh, arbitrage, all of them Indian is 66%. So that makes it a, a equity fund from taxation point of view. It has got international stocks about 25% and uh, it has got cash of about 98%. Uh, so, so this is the actual uh, portfolio breakup. So do not take this seriously. This is wrong. Right? Uh, I, I mean, be very careful about uh, what you see in value research. Most of the time, this expense ratio that you see, the portfolio that you see, even the stocks, they'll be wrong. So please always use the fact sheets for uh, looking at the portfolio. In addition to the fact sheets, the fund will also release a spreadsheet which will give you the full portfolio listing, a detailed listing. So that is also what you should be looking at. We will use value research for the numbers, for that is for the uh, for any analysis based on the now, assuming it is correct. Uh, well, that's trust. I hope we can trust it thus, that much. So um, this is um, a value uh, oriented multi-cap fund. So it, it picks stocks, fundamentally strong companies that are trading uh, below its intrinsic value and uh, it can invest anywhere uh, in the uh, across the market cap so it need not be a large cap or a mid cap earlier value research used to call it a mid cap fund but now after the sebi regulation it has dropped the value from the uh, uh, from the name probably because it's not so popular and uh, positioned itself as a multi cap fund so uh, if you look at the performance tab So I have I have mentioned uh, previously that uh, I I am a uh, investor in this fund. About one third of my uh, uh, equity portfolio for retirement is uh, is in this fund, and I've been an NFO investor since uh, it was an NFO. I've been investing off and on in this fund. I mean, I not off. I mean, investing whenever I could find the money to do so. So or when I thought it was right to invest in this fund. So. Um, before we get to this, so if you uh, re recall the previous video on HDFC top 200, I had talked about how to use this. We'll come to that, but before that, I'll show you the annual return. Since this is uh, a recent fund, we can just look at the annual returns. So um, this is the multi-cap category in gray. Previously, it was in the mid-cap, but anyway, it's, it's good to see it in the multi-cap category as well. Nifty 500 TRI is in the black bar, and the red bar is the uh, is the fund itself. Notice that. In 2014, the fund has outperformed the index, but not the category. And in 2015, the fund has done better uh, than the category. In 2014, it has again uh, underperformed both the index as well as the category. And again, in 2017, it has underperformed both. So this is the kind of fund that it is. It is a uh, fund that invests in international securities. It will hold some amount of cash uh, and it will not be a a great outperformer. The reason why it is uh, five star rated currently is probably because it, it because of the mar market fall, many funds have fallen sharply. And so it is not fallen so sharply. 
and that is the reason why it's five star rated it, it once the market starts zooming up other funds will uh, move ahead of this so th you must understand uh, this very clearly before you uh, if you want to in invest in this fund or if you're if you're already an investor in this fund i'm uh, i apologize for this flashing uh, ad uh, by the way i need to keep the ad blocker off otherwise this uh, scrolling bar that i will talk about that i talked about earlier will not work that's the reason why i have the ads on it's annoying so um so, so please be careful this is not going to be a stellar performance in some in terms of returns it's not going to give you 15 18 20 percent returns but it will give you steady returns 13 14 uh, 15 ish returns and the fluctuations in those returns uh so far have not been so dramatic and uh in the post i would have uh, shared you my uh, return and uh, how my own investments have uh, evolved over time you can have a look at that um what else so let's now look at the um risk measures so this is something that you can use to understand what kind of fund it is now let's so on the uh in the risk measures tab this is the this mean uh, refers to the last three years uh, average of the monthly return so the average monthly return over the last three years has been annualized and you get 11.3 percent and if you look at um the trailing returns here this three years represents the annualized return or the xirr uh, or rather the cagr the compounded annualized return this is the monthly return which has been averaged and then uh, projected as an annual one so this 11.68 will be close typically close to this 11.13 this there will be a relationship between the two actually the difference is a measure of volatility i've talked about that uh, in another post but i won't want to get into that now so let's keep keep our focus on the risk measures table so this mean is uh, uh, mean return refers to that the standard deviation is a measure of volatility so 11.83% is a measure of volatility so the correct way to understand it is uh, uh, if you look at the past uh, 3 years the the fund uh, uh, reward plus risk is 11.13 plus or minus 11.83 so that's the kind of uh, uh, that's the correct way to represent the standard deviation but you don't need to worry about that just look at it as a number which tells you the risk so let's compare that number with nifty 500 nifty 500 is 15.17 so 11.83 is very good it's lower is good for you, you lower volatility the category look at that the category average is actually greater than this nifty 500 and uh, and this fund ppfas is the number one when it comes to the uh, standard deviation so currently number one so it's the uh, is the least volatile fund in the category that is the reason why i uh, i prefer that so out of those 42 funds this has got the lowest standard deviation rank i don't want to make a big deal about the sharp sortino beta and so on i i mean you you can uh, if you want but don't push yourself too much into it i don't want to explain this i have uh, another post explaining what these are but i think for this review this is my focus right and uh, th this is the reason why i like this fund it has got a volatility i like to see that i would like to see how uh, less volatile the fund is when you uh, compare this to the category so if you are uh, if you're not interested in my rolling uh, standard deviation graphs those annoying graphs that i put up every post you can get a quick measure of this but it's only in the last three years you must understand in fact uh, 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 for a long time value research had not even bothered to write this uh, using calendar ma monthly returns for last three years i had uh, complained to anish mohan and anish had complained to value research and then they added it so <laughs> that's uh, that's how slipshot value researchers sometimes they don't uh, they, they have to be more rigorous in uh, presenting data so anyway so uh, well if you are interested in the beta if you also the beta is a relative volatility so uh, beta of 0.7 means uh, the fund is 30 percent less volatile than the nifty 500 and if you look at the category the category is almost as volatile as the uh, nifty 500 and again in terms of beta this has got the first rank so that that's those are all good um, indicators for me as an investor this is what i look at so standard deviation is an absolute measure of volatility beta is a relative measure with respect to the benchmark of the volatility now these um i don't want to get into alpha sharp sartinos and so on you can don't worry too much about it so that's a quick way to look at the risk measures and uh, 
look at it again uh, don't pay too much attention to the annual return i just uh, because the annual returns will always be uh, you know up and down and not many funds even the best funds will not perform year on year well if you look at it just uh, just the annual returns but i wanted to tell you that this is not uh, going to uh, outperform every year of course no fund will but especially this it will not and uh, let's come to the trailing return graph this is what i talked about on the hdfc 200 uh, review so this is a very uh, you know th this fund is only 5 years old so if you just look at all you can see uh, this is all you get but you can notice here itself that the black line is much more you know it's it's much more volatile than the red line it's uh, just until recently it has fallen quite a bit uh, it's been quite okay and that's what i mean by low volatility and if you look at the three year window So in this in this last three year window, it's been less volatile, but it has just about managed to keep pace with the index. But if you go back and it is, uh, you can see that it is uh, again less volatile, but just a little bit outperforming. And this here the outperformance is significant, but uh, and so on. So when when the market has zoomed up, it has not performed uh, too well. But that's okay. That's that's what I uh, that's my kind of fund. I prefer that. So in the five year window, there's not much available. but over this available 5 year period is just done quite well so uh, there's not much you can infer from it because it's it, the window is quite uh, small so uh, ppfas uh, this fund is uh, suitable only for those who prefer uh, low volatility and reasonable returns and those returns themselves will not fluctuate too much if you are that kind of an investor uh, then i think it's a this fund will be a good idea but do not invest in this fund uh, for short periods of course you should not invest in any equity fund for short uh, periods but especially this fund only use it for long term goals at least i would say um, uh, have some exposure to it for 7 year goals have uh, 30 40% exposure for about 10 year goals and more uh, up to 60% not just in this fund in equity generally Uh, uh for long term goals and of course if you are uh, if you want to in invest in this fund for uh, international uh, stock exposure then you your holding should be high see already the fund will only invest about 25% in uh, international stocks and if you are going to hold only 5% or 10% of this fund it will not make any difference in your portfolio so you it should be significant I mean, you, you, mine is uh, at even at uh, 30% mine is like uh, the lower end of significant it's not significant at all you should hold a little more so but you should have the conviction that this fund is the right one for you otherwise uh, it will not work so i'll catch you in another video uh, bye bye